الحديث السابع السابع حديث عن حمران مولى عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه رأى عثمان دعا بوضوء فأفرغ على يديه من إنائه فغسلهما ثلاث مرات ثم أدخل يمينه في الوضوء ثم تمضمض واستنشق واستنثر ثم غسل وجهه ثلاثا ويديه إلى المرفقين ثلاثا ثم مسح برأسه ثم غسل كلتا رجليه ثلاثا ثم قال رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم توضأ نحو وضوئي هذا وقال من توضأ نحو وضوئي هذا ثم صلى ركعتين لا يحدث فيه ما نفسه غفر الله له ما تقدم من ذنبه You can say غفر الله You can say غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه And take Allah سبحانه وتعالى And make it from an active voice to a passive voice It becomes مبني للمجهول ضم أوله وكسر ما قبل آخره It becomes فعلا لا يدا في صلى حمران Who is حمران هو ابن أبان مدني قرشي تابعي حمران he is مدني residing in Medina his name is called حمران ابن أبان he is a مدني residing in Medina he is a قرشي from قريش he is a تابعي he is a سبي the Uthman got him from spoils of war from عين التمر um, from he used to work as a tamr he used to sell and do tamr and dry it out and get it ready so he got him Uthman freed him he, re- he, meet, he met Abu Bakr he met Umar he narrated from Uthman and Muawiyah and took from him Urwat ibn Zubayr took from him وغيره. Bukhari used him and the remaining other scholars of hadith also used him. He died the year seven. He died the year. <coughs> 75 Hijriya. Uthman. رضي الله تعالى عنه. Uthman ibn Affan ibn Abi, Abi Al-As. Ibn Umayyah, Ibn Abd al-Shabz, Ibn Abd al-Manaf. He took Islam with the hand of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr gave him da'wah. And he entered Islam through Abu Bakr. He done the two hijrah. He done two hijrahs. To where? He done the hijrah to Habasha. And he done the hijrah to Medina. وَتَزَوَّجَ عَنِهِ مَارِدْ بِنْتَ يَرَسُولِ اللَّهِ Two daughters of the messenger, Ruqayya and Ummu Kulthum. He married both of them. And because of that, he was called Dhunurayn, the owner of the two lights. وَكَانَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَسْتَحِي يَمِنُ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ The Prophet was very shy of Uthman. The Prophet was. Alayhi salam, more than anyone else. Um, and the Prophet ﷺ told us that the angels are shy of Uthman. Because of the shyness he had. He compiled the Qur'an. After there came a khilaf amongst the people, and he he brought the people together on it. He's from the ten in which was promised Jannah life. He took the khilaf after Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When the hijriya was what? Sanata arba'in wa ishirina, 24 hijriya he took over. Wa qutila shaheedan, he was killed as a martyr. Mustasliman sabiran muhtasiba, he was killed as a martyr who was patient. Who waited his reward from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? He died, Rahimahullah, Salat Khamsin wa Thalafina, 35th Hijriya, on the hand of the Khawarij Kilabu Nar, the dogs of the Hellfire. They killed him. Wadufina, and he was buried in Baqir. So the Khawarij that killed him came from Egypt. They were Fuwar, protesters. Came. And then Khuruj al-Ali, Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala, he was about to die just from thirst. 
They didn't allow him to drink for so many days. And uh, finally they killed him. Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned that his blood, when the first the first drop of blood that came from Uthman, it jumped on the ayah in which he was reading the Quran and he was fasting that day as well. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَسَيْخْفِيكَهُمُ Allah. Allah will suffice you from them. Allah will suffice you from them. His blood fell on that. The people who killed him believed they were getting closer to Allah by killing Uthman. كَفَّرُوهُ They referred to him as a kafir. And then after that they made his blood halal. And they thought they were going to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Uthman radiallahu anhu was killed by the Khawarij and they killed him and he died. And one of the Khariji, who, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim, who killed Ali ibn Abi Talib, just like the same way, the same path in which they killed Uthman, they also killed Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Another Khariji, Khabif, after Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim killed Ali ibn Abi Talib, his name was Imran ibn Hattan, was a Khabif, Khabif Khariji. He made a poetry for Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim because Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim was killed straight away after he killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. This is what he said. This is the line of poetry he said. He's referring to, remember this poetry is done in praise of Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. He said, she said about him, Ya darbatan min taqi. The smacking of Ali came from a hand of a righteous man. Oh. He's saying about Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim who Ali. Min taqiyin. Ma arad biha Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Did not intend from what he did. Illa and he only did it so he can reach min dil arshi, the owner and the one who possesses the throne. Ridwana to be pleased with him. He did not strike Ali and kill him. Except the reason why he did that is so we can get closer to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Inni la adkurhu. He said, I remember him. Rahman ibn Uljum. I remember what he did. Yoman fahsibuhu. And then I start to consider him as what? Oh fal bariyati. The most fulfilling of promises in the eyes of Allah in the scales of the Day of Judgment. Praising Him. Now that's how they praise one another. He, he believes he's getting closer to who? But this man, when he's saying it, he's not joking. And he's not saying it because it sounds nice to see these words, but it means, I know, يتقرب إلى الله بقتل عليم أبي الطالب So who are you and who am I? Hard to be said, we're khawana. Where Khainid, where undercover, where this, where that. A man wants to get close to Allah by killing Uthman and Ali. Who the Prophet said, Wallahi, you are in Jannah. You are in Jannah. Rasulullah is telling them they're all in Jannah. This man is saying, Wallahi, he, this is a taqi. This smacking of Ali was taqwa. Taqwa that did it. Taqwa that did it. And this man was getting closer to Allah wa ta'ala by doing it. So the harm that these people have, who is it more to? Muslims or the, the, the non-Muslims? The Muslims. Their facade, their corruption, their problems goes more to the Muslims than it goes to the disbelievers. So they're a cancer which the Muslims need to tackle. The Muslims need to take a position regarding and know what type of people these people are. Their judur, their roots is khub. Think and ponder. Did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What did he say about the disbelievers? Pay attention. He said, "When you go to fight them, give them da'wah." The Prophet said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, "Pay attention, brothers. Pay attention. I want you to ponder." The Prophet said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, "Ali, فَإِذَا نَزَلْتَ بِسَاحَتِهِ When you come to the battlefield and you meet the enemies, فَتْعُوهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ Call them to Allah تبارك وتعالى in the religion. Pay attention. Call them to Allah. If they obey this from you, good. If they don't, Oblige upon them jizya. If they refuse to pay jizya, fight them. The khawarij, none of those two are given to them. The Prophet said, لَأَقْتُلَنَّهُمْ قَتْلَ عَدْ I'm going to kill them like the people of Ad are destroyed. They're never given any contract or treaty. They are fought. Hill wal haram. In the haram, they're fought. Outside the haram, they're fought. There's no uhud or oaths or contracts that are done with them. They're not dimiyin. Wahideen. The Prophet said that. They're the only people that the Prophet said kill him even in his sujood. 
He ordered three of his... Who said who's going to stand and bring this man to an end? Now people have to know the reality of what these people are and the positions that the Sharia has taken regarding them. One has to have a powerful understanding of that matter. So Uthman died, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When Uthman died and he was killed, um, the big problems occurred, in, occurred to the Muslims and we've spoken about that elsewhere. But you know, this hadith deals with what's the mawdu of this hadith. What, is, what does this hadith tackle? It talks about kayfiyat al-wudu. How the Prophet done the wudu. And taught it to who? Uthman, the companions. So Uthman took the initiative, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, to teach us the wudu of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did he do? Again, brothers, this is one thing you need to keep in mind. Some of us don't teach the people the most simplest things. Your little brother, your little your sister, your, bring them to the toilet, take the water out and say, look, show me how to do wudu. Simple things. Easy things. Uthman, who is the Khalifatul Muslimin at that time, is teaching how to do wudu. He wants them to learn. And how important it is. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So what did he do? Da'a bi wadu'in. Pay attention. If the wow is a fatha, becomes wadu, then that is the vessel or the utensil or the thing that the, or the, uh, the whatever the wudu is going to be done from. If you say wu and you put a dhamma on top of it, you say wudu, then it becomes the ablution, the action itself. It becomes that. It becomes the action itself. So wadu is what? Bifatah. When you make the wow fatha, it means the object or the thing that you're doing it. When you make it with a what? When you wake, when you do it with a dhamma on the wow, then this is the action, the fi'l that you're doing the wudu with. So what did Uthman do? Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Da'a bi wadu'in. He called for? A water, but something to be bring. فأفرغ على يديه من إلائه. ما معنى فأفرغ؟ Pay attention. أفرغ is when the person. This is the. This is the uh, water. He pushed it to the side. And he washed his hand. He washed it from outside. He didn't put his water. So he tilted it over, and he done his wudu. He washed his hand. فأفرغ على يديه. He tilted the thing. Uh, on top of his hands. Min ina'ihi from the vessel, from the object he was, he was in. Fagasalahuma thalatha marrati, he washed it three times. Once the hands were clean, what did he do? Fadkhala yaminahu, he put his right hand, fil wabu in the vessel. He put his hand, his, uh, his right hand. And what did he do? The water he took. Thumma tamadmada. He wobbled the water into his mouth. Remember, we took this before. The madhmada, the still shark. All of them have to be done with bigarafin wahid, bigarafin wahid, with one hand. You don't take one for the mouth and then one for the nose later. Let one. They all share the same water that you brought up. So when you take that water, part of it goes into your mouth and then the remaining goes into your nose. If you take a new water, you're going to put too much in your nose, you're going to hurt yourself. But the, if you've taken the majority of it into your mouth and then a little bit is into your nose, your left hand waits you. What's the left hand going to do? You bring it out with your left. You bring it out with your left. So after that, so your mouth is washed and your nose. Now you know if the water is clean or not. Because you tasted it. You smelt it. You now know if this water is pure or not. Uh, if you're not, by that time you'd stop and say, bring me a pure water. That is the reason why you start with the tamadmad. The tamadmad. And the istishak. You smell the water. Then what do you do? Thumma ghasala wajhahu thalatha. He washed his face three times. What is a face? Uh, this needs to be known. It is mimmanbat, mimmanbat shar. Where the hair comes out from. Now, now some of us, our hair starts from here. Uh, it's finished. Long gone. Allah has gone, slided. It went. Or some... Some people's hair, naturally, four, five, six fingers. Just generally, their, their background is that their hair starts back. 
That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at adatan, the norm where the hair starts from. Uh -huh, for that people. For our, like Somali community, mashallah, they have a very big forehead. So our hair, where it starts from, huh, normally is where we wash to. We wash all of it. So it is where the hair starts from there. Uh, so that's where it starts from. So, and where does it go to? The bottom of it. The beard, which is the dhakna tawlan. This is the length. How long it's going to be? Up to there. Right at the bottom of my beard. That's where it is. That's the face. Okay. What about width? The width is going to be وَمِنَ الْأُذُرِ إِلَى الْأُذُرِ To the ear, to the ear. So right there. This side, where your ear, right there. So here. All of that is your face. If you look around it, it's going to be your face. That's your face. Any part of that you've missed, you haven't done your wudu. You need to do. What did he do then? So he washed his face how many times? He washed his, hair, his face three times. And his hands. So you wash your face. Where do you go now? You wash your hands. Some people... Because at the beginning they wash their hands, they think that the, the next time you don't wash your hands, you wash your hands again. The wudu that you're doing, the, the hand, it starts from the hand, not from here. The hands are in it. Uh, because it says, وَيَدَيْهِ his hands إِلَى الْمِرْفِقَيْنِ To where? To the mirfiqain. Now the question is that, is the ila two or is the ila plus the mirfiqain? The ila. Does it show ila al ghaya? You reach and you don't add it to it, or is it part of it? Two evidences show us that the, first of all, fi asli lugha in the Arabic language, the word ila encompasses that thing as well. What's the evidence for that? Qawluhu ta'ala, wa la ta'kulu amwalakum ila amwalihim. Do not eat your, their wealth. Sorry, wa la ta'kulu wa la ta'kulu amwalakum ila amwalihim. Wa la ta'kulu amwalahum. Sorry, ila amwalikum. Sorry, wa la ta'kulu amwalahum ila amwalikum. The ila encompasses the wealth of theirs, of course. That's one. So aslul lugha, the word ila, ila also means ma'a, with. Good. That's one. The second evidence to show you that is the hadith of Abu Huraira. Annahu tawadda, he washed his hand. He started from here and he washed it. Hatta ashra'a fil adudaini, until he reached right over here. Wa ghasala rijlayhi, he washed his legs. Hatta ashra'a rijlayhi, until he reached his saq. He shin. When he finished, he said, Hakada I saw the Prophet do this. Abu Huraira said. So what does it mean? That the hand after the what? The elbow on top of it. It's called the adut here. Abu Huraira ascribed it to the Prophet. So you have to add it. So the ila had means now the, the, the mirfiq, which is the huh? The elbows, they are added to it and not to it. Pay attention. So after that. مَسَحَ بِرَأْسِهِ He wiped his head, alayhi salatu salam. He wiped. Uh, Uthman, sorry. Uthman wiped. Wipe on your hair has to be done once. <laughs> if you wipe it twice, then that's called washing. It defeats the wording of the word masah. Masah means wiping. Wiping has to be very, has to be done once. If it becomes more than once, it's washing. Anything you go over it many times, you've washed it. You haven't wiped it. Make sense? So the word masah means wipe, to wipe it. And number 10, as sunnah to masah jami' al ras The sunnah, number 10, is to wipe over the, all of the hair. The head, sorry. Because Allah said in the ayah, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Allah says, wipe over your um, head. Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi rahimahullah Because remember the debate I mentioned or the discussion amongst the fuqaha is the ba, this ba in that bat brought a khilaf and a dispute and an argument. What is meant by it? Some said this, some said that. Everyone had a, something to say amongst the fuqaha. Um, Ibn Qudama said, Zama ba'du man yansur, man yansur anna al huwa ba'du al -ras. He said, some of the ones who have claimed and who have tried to push that view, huh, that the wiping is some. They said, anna al ba litab'id. Allahu Akbar. That the ba in biru'usikum, that ba is tab'id. Tab'id means some. Comes from the word ba'd, some. So that ba means some of the hair. 
that some of them pushed that view. So they said as though Allah is trying to say, وَمْسَحُوا وَيْبْ بَعْضُرُوا أُوسِكُمْ Some of you are your head. He said, وَلَلَا for us is Ibn Qudam is saying, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُوسِكُمْ وَالْبَعُوا لِلْإِلْصَاقْ He said the ba here is not ba'd, it's not some. Rather it means all of the head. It means all of it. And the ba here is لِلْإِلْصَاقْ um, The same way he said in ayah to tayammum the verse of tayammum where Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ بِوُجُوهِكُمْ He said, and wipe over your the tayammum, Allah says, wipe over your face. You don't wipe some of your face. You wipe all of your face with it. Uh, also, Al-Imam al-Shawkani, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Nail al-Awtar, which is the sharah of the kitab, Muntaq al-Akhbar, by uh, uh, Majduddin Abu al-Barakat, Ibn Taymiyyah's grandfather. Shawkani did a sharah of the kitab of Ibn Taymiyyah's grandfather's book, it's called al Muntaqa. It's like the Umdatul Hakam book. It's exactly like this book. It's called Ahadithul Hakam. It's like the Bulugh al Balam, Umdatul Hakam. It's called Muntaqa al Akhbar. It's called Muntaqa al Akhbar. Which is it's called Hadithul Hakam where he brings it. It's rather, it's better than Umdatul Hakam and it's also better than Bulugh al Balam. Naam. The, the two best books in Kutub Hadithul Hakam, like this, is two books. Al Muntaqa, which is the grandfather, written by the grandfather of. Um, Ibn Taymiyyah's grandfather, and also the book and uh, Al Muharrar ibn Abdul Hadi. Al Muharrar ibn Abdul Hadi. Those books, Ibn Taymiyyah's student, ha. Their books is, those two books are the best. Those two are the best. And it's the same, just like Umdatul Ahkam, Ahadith al Ahkam, only. And Shawkani done the Sharh of that book. And so whilst he was on that point, he mentioned the Hadith of uh, the Wudu. He said, Lam yabth, Lam yathbut, it has not become firm. It's not firm and it's not strong. The view that says it's some, that the bat is some. وَقَدْ أَنْكَرَهُ سِيبَوَيْهِ The grammarian, سِيبَوَيْهِ, had refused that and rejected the bat here, meaning what? تَبْعِضْ He refused it. In how many ways? في خمسة عشر موضعاً 15 places in his kitab. 15 different places. سِيبَوَيْهِ refuted the idea that the bat here could mean tab'id, refuted that. So if the grammarian of the language, the man who said no, the is going to be going strong. Um, also, authentic hadith refute that issue. That proved that this bat cannot even be tab'id. And I'm going to mention um, three hadith. One is the hadith of Rubayy' bint Mu'awwad. The hadith of Rubayy' bint Mu'awwad. Radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, فَمَسَحَ بِيَدِهِ مُقَدِّمَ رَأْسِهِ وَمُؤَخِرِي The Prophet ﷺ, he wiped, alayhi salatu salam, from the beginning of his head to the back. Also, that's one hadith. The other hadith is Abdullah ibn Zayd's hadith, where he said, وَمَسَحَ بِرَأْسِهِ The Prophet wiped his head. فَأَقْبَلَ وَأَدْبَرَ He went forward, then he came. So he came forward and he came went back. Good. He came, he went back, uh, sorry, he came. Uh, فَأَقْبَلَ He came forward. And then he went back. That's what he said. The hadith of Miqdad, Al Miqdad ibn Ma'di Karab. Al Miqdad ibn Ma'di Karab. He said, Falamma balaga masuratsi, when the Prophet reached the wiping of his head, Wada'a kafay, he placed his hand, Ala Mukadim Rasi, Thumma Marabi Mahatta Balaga kafa, until he reached his neck. Thumma Radahu Mahatta Balaga al Makana Levi Bada Amin Hu. And he brought it back to where he started from. So he reached his neck and he brought it back. Those two narrations, and the grammarian, see the way he refuted it. So the hadith, the strongest view is that your whole hair, you have to wipe it. Number 11. Istihbabu, that it's recommended. Salatu rak'atayni aqib al wudu. It's recommended, highly recommended. That the person prays two rak'ah after he does his wudu. Number 12. Al wudu, the wudu, min mukaffirat al dhunub. The wudu is from the expiators of sins. What sins do they expiate? There's that khilaf. There's that khilaf. But the strongest, inshallah, is that it expiates your minor sins. The little mistakes that have occurred from you. Doing wudu will expiate it for you. The, may, the, your major, the major sins, it requires repentance. Repentance. Mm -hmm. Or else, or else, if the repentance wasn't needed for the major sins, 
and the, the wudu will take it away for, uh, for you and deal with it, then nobody would really need to repent. Everybody could just, all the wudu that they've done has actually taken it away for, for them. So the repentance is needed. Number 13. تَحْذِيرُ مَلْ لَهَا فِي صَلَاةِ بِالتَّفْكِيرِ فِي أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ عَدِبِ الْقَبُولِ Warning. The person who is thinking in the salah matters regarding the world, that the salah, that, that will not be accepted from him. It won't be accepted from him. The hadith shows that the person ha, who prays the salah, who ha, will not be accepted from him. Where's that, where's that evidence that it won't be accepted from him? Now, where does, where's the evidence that it won't be accepted from him? Because the hadith conditioned an adamu wujud sharp. The fact that absence of the condition will, absent, will be absent of what? The acceptance of the expiation. The expiation is connected to the existence of the salah. So that's the evidence. Number 14. Fourteen. Yambari, it is required upon the person not to be deceived. Don't get deceived. Which is what? That every time you do wudu, inshallah, this is going to do everything for you, alhamdulillah. Don't get deceived. Because Bukhari brought a wording additional to this hadith where it said at the end, Bukhari brought a wording with the hadith which said, La taghtarru. Don't be deceived. Oh, Bukhari added that wording to it. In the riwayah of Bukhari, in Kitab al-Raqa'iq, it said, La taghtarru. Don't be deceived with it. Oh, because Allah is mercy. Don't let it deceive you. Mm -hmm. 15. At-targhibu fil ikhlas. The hadith is pushing you to come with sincerity. When you do the wudu, who said do you do it for? Allah tabarakat ala. So sincerity. And also that you do what? Huh? You pray the salah for Allah's sake. And don't talk to yourself about the dunya. Sixteen. Teaching by action. Because that is the greatest message or the best way to pass that message over nicely. To teach by action. Number 17. Three times doing the wudu except the head for very late only once.